Blessings, my brethren. It is so good to come to you today to share with you words from the Word. It is such a joy and a delight to be able to open the Word of God and share with His children, thus saith the Lord. Today, we want to start a brand new little subject. And this time, I want to speak a little bit to the family. And I would like to share a little bit on an unhappy union, a union that is not happy. The couple, they're not happy. Their relationship is not producing happiness. But before I do, I want us to pray. Our Father, we come to you today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I give you thanks, dear God, for all that you have done and all that you're doing in and through our lives. God, may you be honored. May you be glorified, even as I share this devotion with these, your people. God, every listener, I pray you will bless the hearts and you would use these devotions to bring honor and glory to your name and use them to help your children and all that would listen. Have your way now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ron Hamilton wrote the song that we love to sing here at church. And the title of the song is Rejoice in the Lord. He said in the first answer, God never moves without purpose or plan when trying his servant and molding a man. Give thanks to the Lord Though your testings seems long, in darkness he giveth a song. O oh, rejoice in the Lord, he makes no mistake. He knoweth the end of each path that I take. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. Our scripture reading for this little series is taken from Proverbs, the 14th chapter. And I like to read from verse 8 to verse 13, and then chapter 18, verse 14. Proverbs 14, verse 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that myth is heaviness. Let's go to chapter 18 of Proverbs and uh, read verse 14. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but the wounded spirit who can bear. Let me read that again. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? Today, the enemy is trying all that he can, walking as long as he can, as hard as he can, and with whomsoever he can, to destroy the union in the homes. God is the one who has established the home, and Satan is doing all he can to destroy homes today. If I say to you that there are people that are happily married, and there are people that are married and miserable. Let me share a little bit with you on this subject, an unhappy union. Before I say too much, and you miss this, let me say it now. A happy or an unhappy marriage is always based 
on the attitude of the copper. This is so important. I want to repeat it. A happy or unhappy marriage is always based on the attitude of the couple. It is reported that 45 to 50 percent of the first time marriage ends up in divorce. I remember when I was growing up, divorce would be something people would be ashamed of. Things have changed. Along the same line of the 45 to 50 percent of first time marriage ends up in divorce, the same line, 60 to 70 percent of second time marriage ends up in divorce. Likewise, 70 to 73 of third time marriages ends up in divorce too. Statistics report that 32 percent of those who are married and miserable. Not married and happy, but married and miserable. Looking at all of this, today we will have to consider carefully the words of the Apostle Paul when he wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 24, 32, and 38. Listen, brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Let me read that again. Brethren, of course, when he used the word brethren, he's speaking to believers. He said, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Verse 32, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried, care it for the things that belong it unto the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Verse 38, so that he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, and he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. What words for us to ponder. Could it be true that there are children of God who are married and miserable? If that is true, then it is also true that believers, married believers, come to church very miserable. But the reason why we sometimes don't see the misery is because there is what is known as a religious mass. Not too long ago, just about all of us wearing masks on our faces, covering our nose and our mouth. You could see that. And it was okay because we knew why we were wearing the mask. But these religious masks that's worn today is not so easy to detect. Isn't it true that many travel to church together, school before leaving home, get in the vehicle schooling, get to the church parking lot, then put on the religious mask and make it seem in the eyes of the public that everything is all right. Sing the songs of the faith. Say amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Especially if the preacher's point touches someone else. But when he says something that hits home, you can hear a pen drop. We are told four out of every five men regret being married. Only God knows how many women regret as well. Why? I believe it is fair to say love is missing in the relationship. And sometimes we stress so much on love that we miss the other part that needs to be there. And what is that? Submission is missing in the relationship. I believe when a man's love for God is what it ought to be, love for others will always be in place. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, the Apostle Paul, writing to the Corinthian believers, said, Whether therefore we eat or drink, or whatsoever we do all to the glory of God. Brethren, let's encourage our brothers 
and our sisters to do all that we can, all that they can, all of us, to bring honor and glory to God and to defeat the enemy in our lives, that he would be defeated in our homes and defeated in the church and defeated in our society. My time is up for today, but I'll be back next morning and build and share with you a little bit on this matter of an unhappy union, married and miserable. Father, give wisdom. Use us as you see fit to honor and to glorify you. Have your way in our lives. Use your word, Lord, that there would be amends in these relationships. We love you, praise you, and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please share this devotion with a friend, a family member, a colleague. If you have their number, please share it. You'll be surprised to know who can be helped. God bless you. Thank you for partnering with us. Have a great day.